Welcome to Hard and Trocken. In this video I want to demonstrate you how to install SQLite Studio. SQLite Studio will be the basic software we're going to use in the first part of our lecture. As I'm using a Windows 10 machine, I will show you how to install SQLite Studio on Windows 10. However, installing on Apple products is equally easy. First we type in Google SQLite Studio. And we open sqlstudio.pl. Now we click on download and go to the GitHub releases page. When using a Windows machine, we choose install SQLite Studio 3 to 1 exe, which is this file. If you're using Mac OS, choose install SQLite Studio 3 to 1 DMG installer, which is that file. Anyhow, I choose this one and it's downloading here. It's about 33 megabytes. There we go. Now I open it and we are ready to install it. So I keep that location. I keep this also, just go on. Now we, we press install and now it's going to install it. Yes. And now it's um, being installed. And we finish the installation. And You see this little icon down here? So that is SQLite Studio. Now let's maximize the window. Now SQLite Studio is a software which we use to work with databases. So a database is the basic structure, uh, the basic file we're going to um, load into SQLite Studio. So in order to check if everything is working, I suggest that we just download one of the databases which we are going to use in the lecture and check if we can load it into SQLite Studio. Now I have provided two database files in Microsoft Teams, in our team. So I open Microsoft Teams. Um, now that is our, that is our course um, team. And you see here we have the files section Dateien. I click on it and um, here you have number three data. I open that folder and you see that there should be two files and the ending is .sqlite, um, tools.sqlite and product.sqlite. I want to download product.sqlite and try to load it into SQLite Studio. So let's do that by clicking here and download it. Downloads. Downloads. Here we go. You see product.sqlite. So I don't want to keep that here in the downloads folder, but I want to store it in some place where I know where it is located. So um, I just copy it from here, say to the desktop. Yeah. I don't recommend using the desktop just for a reason of simplicity, I put it on the desktop. So now we have product.sqlite on our desktop. I can close these. We go back to SQLite Studio. And now we say database, and then you go add a database, database type SQLite 3, that is fine. And here we are supposed to choose a file. Now let's use that little folder icon, press on it, and um, then choose desktop and product SQLite. So we open it and click OK. Now up here in that left hand side part, you see that there is a little database icon saying product. And if I double click on product, you see that a structure is opening. The first level of the structure says tables. And within tables, you see that there are different tables, customers, deliveries, orders, products, tools, and X, Y, and Z. 
Now that shows that SQLite Studio has been successfully installed and it is indeed working. Now let's have a look at some basic functions of SQLite Studio. First, let's just double click on one of these table names. Um, for instance, customers, double click. And you see that here, um, the structure of the table called customers is opened. Now, what does that mean? It means that the table customers consists of four columns. The first column is called customer ID, and the second one is called name, the third one is city, and the fourth is since. So it's quite useful to think of a table in a database as some kind of Excel table with columns. So these names here are the names of the columns in my Excel table. In that second column, you see which data type each of these columns is. Varchar32 means that's a character string with 32 characters. Varchar64 is character string with 64 characters. And date time is some timestamp data type. Now, the structure of a table is one thing. But I guess we get the best impression of what a table looks like if we look at the content of that table. And this is done by clicking on data. Here you see the typical Excel table-like style with the four columns, customer ID, name, city, and since. And here you have the various entries and the various data sets. So here one line is one data set. Now I want to demonstrate to you how we can type and execute basic SQL script. For this purpose, we use the SQL editor and we open this SQL editor by clicking on that little icon, which looks like paper with a pen. If we click on it, this editor window opens. And you also see down here the tabs for the different windows. Apparently I had already one open. Now currently we're using this one, SQL editor number two. So that was the structure of our table. That is the other editor window and that is the editor window I want to use now. Now here where the cursor is blinking, we can type things. So let's type a very basic SQL command. Um, something like select everything from table customers. So that is select, select star from customers. And I execute this query by clicking on that little arrow sign here, execute query. If I do that, you see the so-called result set of the execution is printed down here. Select star from customers means that I want to select all data sets from the table customers. And you see, we have apparently 23 data sets in that table. If we want to look at the table deliveries, we just do the same select star, but not from customers, but from deliveries and execute this one. There you see, we have 46 entries, 46 data sets and two columns, order ID and days. Okay, so we have successfully installed SQLite Studio and have done our first steps with a database. To conclude, I want to demonstrate you how you close a database, because if you want to work with a new database, it is um, recommendable to close all other databases. So that is done by right clicking on, in this case, product and just say, remove the database. We remove the database. Yes, we are sure. And you see empty space. It has been removed. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you next time.